So you have a deep connection with Harlem. Uh, so uh, how was that uh, for you going uh, back into Harlem, shooting something uh, in history that uh, you know it's very relevant to everything that's uh, happening right now in a place where you have uh, you've lived, you have uh, uh, kind of developed your art form. Right? Yeah, and I mean, you want to talk a little bit about that. Born in Harlem, raised in Harlem, still live in Harlem. So, you know, a lot of the feelings are just like great pride to be doing this wonderful work at home, right? Um, to be bringing the stories of the people before me. Um, and short commute. To life. And short commute, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, some days I was like walking home from lunch. They're like, you going to, you going to lunch? Like, what, you think I'm going to go to catering? My, literally, I live around the corner. Right Not the <laughs> catering wasn't delicious, but still, I was <laughs> home cooking. So it was just kind of a surreal, you know, experience. I've done most of my work in New York. I've been really lucky that way. And I was like just starting to take it for granted. And then I got a show about Harlem, like specifically. And I'm so, I so, I love my neighborhood. That's why, you know, I still live there. I think it is just the best place on earth. It's, it's so vibrant, unique. There's so much soul and style. Um, and pride and community there um, and that's real and you can't find that in every neighborhood like in the neighborhood we're in right now this is not a little village yeah. but uptown is um, so to be able to you know talk to some of the older residents in my parents building who were like oh yeah I knew Bumby Johnson like they're they're yeah. they're like they think it's cool that I'm shooting this, but they're not like super impressed. <laughs> yeah. Because they knew Bumpy, it's right? Like, that's so, the same guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but all with this like acknowledgement of the of the work that he did in the community um, mm -hmm. for it, for his people, for our people. So it's um, it's definitely near and dear to me this project more than more than any other. Just feel connected in a, a different way. And how did you feel about Harlem being represented? Uh, the way it's represented, and it looks beautiful. Truthfully, it's all, yeah, I mean, truthfully, it's, you know, it's um, you, we often see this one-sided. Right. Even in you know present day, Harlem presented as this kind of like dingy, dangerous place. I remember right. growing up, you know, I'd be abroad, and people would say, "Where are you from? I'm from New York City. Where in New York? Oh, I'm from Harlem." And they'd be like, "Oh," <laughs> and you know, this like wow. stereotypical like. Well, have you ever been, and I, I kid you not, this is not exaggerations, have you ever been, have you ever been robbed? Is it safe there? And, it, and it's like, yeah, of course, there were, there were times that Harlem was not a safe place to live. There are times where, you know, anywhere in the we'll city. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Times I mean, Square. Times Square, you get mugs, you get, you know, I have friends who've had leather jackets stolen in Times Square in the 80s, right. 90s, or whatever. Um, but to, to keep it real, to see the dangerous side of Harlem, the poor side of Harlem, the drugs and the violence, that's all real stuff, right? So for them to, for Chris and Paul, to, to not glamorize the violence in this series, but to show it because it was part of things, but to also like, you know, we shot in Minton's, which is was not there back in 1963, but it was just a beautiful, you know, jazz club in New York City in uh, Harlem now. Um, to see the, the the glamour and the glitz and the style, like I said, and the swag that is very specific to Harlem, was so nice and relieving um, because they have presented this world as a full world. Mm -hmm. It's um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and I think that is very different and unique than what we, we usually see of this place that I love so dearly. Um, one thing you were talking about earlier is that you don't often see women in these roles, especially in crime films, but also I would say even just an African-American, like yeah. When, yeah. when you have yeah. a male lead, you won't see their wife, sure. you know, or their mother or anyone be as important in the story. Even but though we know how important they in are. Reality, in reality, there is it's no, like the backbone. There's yeah. no black people without, without black, the women. black women yeah. yeah and without black mothers and wives For especially sure. and then you have these scenes like you have the scene opposite her when you pulled a gun on her then you have the scene <laughs> which is dope sorry <laughs> 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 I have to do it I mean the you with my baby. just cut you know, the gun to change it up for me. I was like yeah. please tell me she got a gun <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she opened the door, oh, like, what's she doing? Like, no, 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 you know what's behind that door. Like, please tell me there's a gun in this house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, not just, oh you know, God. just to make sure. But, not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have your scene, you know, with Forrest, when, like, the letter you wrote, you know. Oh, yeah. the yeah. oh my God, the superhero line, and then the cut oh. to Forrest sitting there. Yeah. And then when you come back into the room with him and you're talking, so what was it like? 
or how do you prepare and how do you even get over like once you finish these things mm-hmm. like you know the intensity of them for me it was a lot of homework a lot of a lot of homework about heroin addiction and what that does to the body and what that does to a person mentally and i think mm. who at least is and i think then just a lot of sort of personal i did a lot of personal journaling about what it would be like to have a father like that you know what i mean and and to grow up with this infamous person who's great to everyone else but you and how much blame i think i that at least put into that that pain and so i I think for me it was a lot of sort of background and homework and then me sitting in my dressing room sort of like breathing into that and living into that and then I learned this thing in school where like after the day is over when everything is done like I would lay on the ground and there's a where you lay on the ground and you give it back to the earth right like you don't carry it home with you so I would lay on the ground and just breathe and feel my back and my body on the ground and just like let the earth have it because the earth can take it Mm -hmm. and when it's done today yeah yeah I, I don't know if you know this, but I, f- I find that letter of yours in a later scene. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I, like... That's tough. I, on, day, on days where where you have to be very emotional, those are stressful days. Because that shit does not always come. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, if, you're, if like, Il Finesh is having the best day ever, <laughs> and Mamie needs to get super emotional, I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be hard, because I'm so happy in real life today. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> those are, like, little gems, honestly. Mm-hmm. To find that letter letter was it was like oh it doesn't matter if Hill Finesse is having a good day because this is real oh, yeah. and this is heavy and like thinking about my own dad and reading a letter like that was like it, again those guys were such such gifts mm-hmm. as writers it was all it was all there I mean yeah just like internally it, they gave us the greatest gifts that they could have as an actor with their generous writing and it was great to have to have them on set and to like, yeah and to be able to paul was a wonderful coach for me i mean it was our directors were incredible too yeah but paul who was obviously so close to the project who mm-hmm. you know wrote hoodlum mm-hmm. and uh and who has this personal connection to bumpy was on set almost every day yeah um and and was really lovely about in gentle ways and without interfering with directors or at all just yeah. coming up and saying like just offering a little extra a little something to you know get you there if you need a little little help or being there for clarity about uh, answer any questions any like, like i mean with the million questions we <laughs> ask beforehand also just being there in the moment to sort of to help to help with like little character things yeah. like he he was never intrusive the director always got to sort of to, yeah. develop the story but like little character things and uh, that only someone who was so in the thick of who, it like, for was so just, long like, could really possibly just going through every yeah. person and it was so helpful yeah